Uh, and the recording, uh, the comments will be recorded and they will be posted to the District 4 website. Uh, and the District 4 website, uh, we don't have a chat feature on this meeting. So, uh, um, yeah, I'll just read it to you. It's D-I-S-T, the number four, G-S-A-A dot org. Um, okay. In AA, uh, spirituality uh, and money mix in the hat. Today, uh, we're going to explore where does spirituality and technology mix in AA. When you leave this meeting today, uh, we hope that you have a better understanding of how technology can and does support our primary purpose. You'll learn some of the signposts of caution that we have discovered. And hopefully you will learn uh, that we never have to abandon, modify, or compromise any of our principles as we seek to harness the benefits of technology. What you hear here today, what you learn today, please share with your home group, with your sponsees, and with your fellow AA members. All of you that are on this meeting today can be the messenger in this time of vast change. At this point, it is an honor and, and a real privilege for me to introduce this morning's speaker. Billy N. is a past panel 49 delegate, a past AA World Service Director, and a past Class B General Service Trustee. I've heard him speak many times He's direct, he's thoughtful, he can be challenging, and most of all, he's disarmingly authentic. So please welcome Billy N. this morning. Thanks, good morning, I'm Billy, I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Billy. My sobriety date, January the 5th of 1990. My home group is the Alfreda Unity Group in Alfreda, Georgia. And uh, welcome to anybody else who's crazy enough to get up on a Saturday morning, talk about AA service. Um, and I'm glad to be here. Um, my topic, there's a lot of directions I could go. Um, but I, I just want to... I'm guessing the crowd that's out there, because I can't see you either. Um, I'm guessing a few of you probably have the, the latest edition of the Grapevine, the September Grapevine. It's very interesting. Because on the... I holding a phone looking at some kind of online platform, could be WebEx, could be Zoom, could be GoToMeeting. And you see the squares for each person that are there. And the stories are all about embracing technology. Te technological biggest failure of Alcoholics Anonymous service in the history of Alcoholics Anonymous. It probably in another 20 years we'll see when we might catch up to being just five years behind, not 15 or 20. The reason I tell you to look at this month's grapevine is because I want to read to you the 1996 grapevine. I want to show you the climate that I have been dealing with my entire time in service. In 1996, there was no picture or even words suggesting or embracing how technology could help us. Instead, the article was, is there a danger 
that some people will replace face-to-face -face meetings with online ones. I'm not going to read definitions out of a dictionary this morning, but I would ask you to look up the word danger because language is important in AA service. Language transmits a message. Using a word like danger contributed in putting us so far. I actually have in front of me a 1997-98 service manual. It is the service manual that I went to the General Service Conference with in 1999 and 2000. I want to read out of that index for you. Because the title of the service manual is the AA service manual, combined with the 12 concepts for world service. But when you read our service manual, you would think that all we're interested in is hierarchy and titles and control. Because when I go to the index, I'll tell you what's not there. Public information is not in the index of the 1998 service manual. I would argue that public information is one of the most important parts of our AA service. Let me go to the C section. Oh, guess what? Cooperation with the professional community is not in the 1998 service manual. How is that possible? Oh, let me go to the T section. Treatment facilities and committees are not in the 90, 1998 service manual. Oh, and then let me go back to C. Corrections is not in the 1998 service manual. It might be in a box that's drawn to show a committee at the conference. But the reason I read those four is perhaps the most important thing that's not in the 1998 service manual is if you go to W for website, there is no such listing. I grew up in AA service kind of fighting the battle of technology in the AA website. The AA website, I think the reason we're so far behind, and I would hope, I know that some people want to, I guess they want to be nicer about it, and I'm being nice. I recognize why we are where we are. But I measure things in lives lost and lives saved. To me, there is no other metric in Alcoholics Anonymous. Either we're doing things that help save alcoholic lives or we are not. The reason we're so far behind in technology is by about 2005, and I don't have that version in front of me of the service manual, the website did appear in the service manual. The description made clear that it only had one use, public information. No use for communicating between members. No use for helping members get help. Remember, before the meeting guide, and I'm sure most people are familiar with it, all we had was a directory of AA groups that GSO produced. We had the East Coast, East of the Mississippi, West of the Mississippi, and then Canada. And um, the meeting guide, uh, the app, is the first time the General Service Office has been in the business of helping alcoholics or people who think they might be an alcoholic find help. But when the website was originally created, it was not supposed to be for that. And any time, and I was at multiple board meetings and committee meetings, and I chaired 
I was on the Public Information Committee as a delegate in 1999 and 2000, chaired it in 2000, and I'm long past any resentment, just let me be clear. I understand why my view of technology was so different. It always makes me talk about um, diversity and inclusion. Now, diversity and inclusion has a direct effect on technology on many levels. I'm going to tell you why it held us back. Uh, in my professional life, diversity and inclusion is a very important topic for me. As such, I have a very different view than the current leadership of the General Service Board. Um, and they have a very different view than me. Quotas don't work. Picking people simply because they fit into some category doesn't work. The only thing that works, and first of all, diversity is not always good. I could give you some examples of countries that were very diverse and had no inclusion for many years. Diversity without inclusion does not work. And so you might ask why I'm bringing this up. Well, anytime I hear an AA leader talk about diversity, I hear him talk about everything except age. And are pretty much institutional discrimination against young people in service has held us back in technology. The average age of a delegate today in 2020 is still four years older than me, chronologically. I've already been a delegate an appointed committee member for four years, a non-trustee director for four years, and a trustee for four years. And I'm still four years younger than the average delegate this year. So that means back in 1999, and I have a picture with the oldest delegate at the conference because I was the youngest. By the time the conference started, I was 33 years old. Um, I have always been at least one, sometimes two generations forward in technology than most of the people I have served with in service. So I don't have a resentment. I don't blame them. And when people say, well, Billy, how does that affect? Well, let me explain this to you. I run a pretty large company. I recruit college kids right out of college. Sometimes, and I travel a lot for work, I go into my office on a Monday if I'm not traveling. I sometimes take the people who work for me out to lunch on a Monday. Well, the world is a little different today than it was when my boss took me out to lunch on a Monday. First of all, none of these kids have DUIs because they don't drive on the weekend. Makes me so jealous of them. They all Uber everywhere. Second of all, they all owe each, owe each other money because I have a lot of young professionals who all live together, hang out together. They all owe each other from the weekend for baseball tickets or dinner on Saturday night. And they all use these fancy apps. They all use Cash App or Zelle or Venmo. During the pandemic, I have embraced being able to play poker online with other sober members that I know for a long time. And every once in a while during the non-pandemic, we would get together and play in person. But guess what? Due to a young kid in my office, he introduced me to a thing called Discord. 
And Discord is what all the gamers use to talk, I can't say the word, to each other, smack, while they're gaming against each other. So guess what? Now I get to talk to my friends on Discord when I'm playing poker. And so why is that all important? It's important because if you are an organization, and I'm not saying it's bad or on purpose, but if you are an organization that institutionally has kept younger people away from service leadership roles, you will be far, far behind in technology. I can't go far behind in technology in my professional career because the younger people are all over me because they want the latest. And when you look at certain decisions, general the AA service structure is made, just look at our history. Some people thought that the creation of the website would be the slippery slope of destroying Alcoholics Anonymous. Why, I don't know, but they did. People thought having our books online digitally. So I want to bring you in to a meeting that I rarely talk about. I just don't get the opportunity. And it's interesting in AA service that sometimes there's a lot of meetings that aren't documented anywhere, but are historically very important. If you wanted an example of that, you'll find it nowhere, would be two days after Bill W. died. Two days after Bill W. died, the AAWS board did a very forward-looking thing. They got together, they had an emergency meeting, and they voted to destroy Bill's office, to throw out and destroy all the furniture, not let any AA lunatic go to the dump and find Bill W.'s desk. They destroyed it. They tore down the walls, got rid of the carpet, because they knew, looking into the future, that if they didn't get rid of Bill's office, that would become a shrine or a memorial. And we would never be able to leave from that building, ever. I'm going to tell you about another meeting that you won't find documented anywhere. At the end of 2009, the AAWS board invited three very brilliant AA members who worked in technology in and around uh, uh, Silicon Valley, or it's Silicon Valley related. These three people were told to give us a presentation about our future. What is it going to look like? It blew my mind. I remember one of the guys looking at us and saying, if you're making all this money on print literature right now, you better change your model. It's going away. I remember the other guy saying, uh, I agree with my friend about the print literature, but I would tell you that in the future, people want content for free digitally. And you're going to have to totally transform how you transmit information. Now, that's the year we redid the website, and it's been recently redone again. But I want to tell you about my first meeting at AA World Services as a director. I had an iPad in front of me like I do right now. But my first meeting as a director, during a break, someone came up to me to give me a suggestion. I'm sure some of you have been in an assembly and maybe someone's given you a suggestion. And the suggestion that was given to me was that I should maybe not do my work email while I was at 
the AA World Services board. So let me tell you why that's hysterical. First, that I was not doing my emails. Second, that I had to explain to somebody that I was simply taking notes on my iPad, that that's how I take notes. But remember, I was in my younger 40s then. However, what was the average age of a trustee or director on the AA World Services Board when I started serving in 2009? If you don't know, I'll tell you. It was 67. Some 25 years older than I was. If that's the attitude that we've faced, no wonder we're so far behind in technology. Now, I made the motion to start online contributions and recurring contributions. I remember when a trustee looked right at me and said, Billy, AAs are never going to give money through a computer. Now, to some part, he's right. I don't want to discredit his comment too much. We're up to about a million four a year in online contributions. But that's barely 12% or 11% of our contributions, something like that. Um, there's certain traits that run in alcoholics. They don't make you an alcoholic but they're common, so there's a difference. What makes me an alcoholic is that I have the allergy and the mental obsession. However, once you've worked with a lot of people in AA, you tend to notice that there's a lot of common kind of traits, let's just say. They don't make people alcoholic, but it's kind of unusual how many of us have this same trait. Immediate gratification comes to the top of the list of other alcoholics that I know. Um, and why do I say that? Think about the math involved with June of 2020 being the single largest contribution month the General Service Office has ever had. Ever the largest contribution month ever. Now, at the end of that month, not even at the beginning, the General Service Board put out a video. But that was at the end of the month with only a few days left to make contributions. So why before that video went out were our contributions so large? Well, I'll give you the mathematical answer. Look at the amount of groups on March 16th, 2020. Just do your own little survey. Go to all the groups you know in your area and find out how many of them on March of 2000, in March 16th of 2020 accepted Venmo or PayPal or Cash App or some other electronic method the seventh tradition. And once you get the answer to that question, then find out how many groups by May 15th, 2020 were using those same electronic apps. It's no surprise that June was the largest number because by the time May, sure, March was difficult for AA. But in April, Zoom conferences, Zoom meetings, Zoom home groups. Some people use WebEx, go to meeting. By April, we had hit our stride, believe it or not. We weren't missing a beat. By May 1st, May 15th, almost every group that I go to now accepts Venmo or PayPal. So there's no surprise why contributions were so large in June because groups had money. Groups had more contributions probably than they've had before. A lot of groups. 
And we're going to have to find a way to embrace those because immediate gratification is important. Right now, you can't Venmo or Cash App or Zelle the general service board. You can set up an ACH or you can use PayPal. But we're going to have to find a way around that. Imagine if the general service board had Venmo or Cash App. Imagine if that was posted in the meetings between now and May 15th that just happened. That $900,000 number would only be larger. We can come to AA as a newcomer. And sometimes, you know, I have two friends and I want to quote them both. One of them's name is Craig. And Craig always says, are you bringing the steps to service? An important question for sure. My other friend, Jimmy, he quotes our friend, Bob. And Bob always says, bring your recovery to service. Bring your recovery to service. Why is it so unpopular to do certain things in service that we do in recovery? That question, it sits on my mind all the time, that there are certain things we would never do in recovery, but yet somehow we find it acceptable on the service side. Money for one thing. Money is how many area districts, areas themselves, inner groups, have I seen that have budgeted to lose money at the beginning of the year? They think they're going to spend more money than they take in. Would you ever sit across from a sponsee and tell them to do that? Would you tell them, you know what, just get another credit card, get a couple of cash advances, keep spending money the way you're spending. God will take care of all your problems. We would never do that. We would turn to the page with the bedevilments in the big book, let them know they might be suffering from untreated alcoholism. They might have an agnosticism towards money or some other belief. Um, I've told this story before. One morning at an AWS meeting, I talked at the meeting about going out to dinner the night before at an outside restaurant we didn't eat in the hotel. And I said that morning, it was interesting when we went to that restaurant because it was a restaurant that had a plate glass door and a plate glass window. Except you couldn't see through the door into the restaurant because there were so many stickers of the type of payments they accepted. There was no room to look through the glass. Because Bill says in concept six, we chose the corporate method for a reason. Well, we chose the corporate method, except the corporate method has been ahead of us for a long time. All these other businesses, they just want to get paid. They don't mind how people pay them. They mind their own business as long as it's legal. AA, we don't do that. AA, we say, we need your money, but we care how you send it to us. We need it in an old-fashioned checkbook. We need it in cash. No business in the world could survive on that method. Groups and areas and districts and the general service office are going to have to embrace accepting contributions in a digital fashion. And then we have the issue of working with new people and working with people who might be in AA but can't get to an AA meeting. 
this is being hosted by a district in Sarasota, Florida. My mother died in January of 2000, three days before the January board weekend, because I was a delegate chair that year and got to go. I went to my mother's funeral and two days later headed for the board weekend. My mother spent some time in a hospice. I don't know if anyone here has ever had a family member or a friend. That was my in first introduction into the hospice world. Hospices are incredible. I, I used to joke around because my mother's roommate would go down to the break room and drink Jack Daniels and smoke cigarettes. And the nurse explained to me that they were about quality of life leading to their transition to wherever they were going. So they had no clear broth diets. If you wanted a hamburger medium rare, you could have one. Three days before my mother died, I walked into her room and there was a lady doing her nails. Now somebody is you know, arrogant as me, might think, why would you do my mother's nails? She's clearly going to die any day. But that hospice taught me about respect for life and quality of life. So why do I bring this up? I have a house in Florida. Most of you are in Florida. January the 1st of 2020. It's a short eight months ago. How many people were in hospices or senior living communities in Florida that could not get out to a meeting? If you go to, I'm just going to throw out some big city names, New York, San Francisco, Chicago, start with those three. If you go to their AA websites, you can find the Zoom information to attend an AA meeting. How is it possible that on January the 1st of 2020, you couldn't do that? How is that possible? I'll tell you why it's possible. Because if there was no such thing as COVID, what we're doing right now, uh, we'd be on the investigation list at GSO because somebody would be writing a letter saying you won't believe what these people are doing. <clears throat> they're having a webinar through Zoom. They're having AA people on video. If this happened in mass before COVID, so my question is, why didn't it happen? What were we missing? Have we operated in so much fear? Because I believe you can apply the, te the 12 traditions to just about anything. If you take the time to do the work, you can find a way to mend the technology and the traditions, but to just not do it, to just put our heads in the sand, someone should get a fourth edition first printing big book. You can get them online. Just Google fourth tradition, first printing Alcoholics Anonymous and buy it. And then read the forward to the fourth tradition, I mean to the fourth edition, and compare it to the one that you have in your house right now. And you will see that the, it was changed because the old timers in AA went crazy because there was a line in there that said, 
modem to modem or face to face, there's no real difference. So we had this big, big uproar. Fear has crippled us around technology. I want to give a couple of examples. One is a regional forum I went to in Dallas. One in Dallas, one in Oklahoma. And uh, <clears throat> I told you when I was a delegate, I was 33 years old. The internet was supposed to be a bad thing. I went to this regional forum and there was a man sitting in the back of the room at a workshop on technology. This is in 2015. He, uh, I know his age now because after the workshop, I talked to him in the hallway <coughs> and I said, you know, I'm going to be talking about you and I and our little interaction today for a long time. And I was right, because I'm still doing it today. I said, and knowing your age would be important for the story. So he was 78 years old. Over 20-something years sober. And he raised his hand in this workshop and he said to me, you guys are trying to kill me. You don't want to help me. And I said, well, what do you mean? <clears throat> and he said, it might even be a little earlier. It might be like 2013. He said, every day I'm on a mailing list for the daily reflection. And every day someone emails it to me. And I get it on my computer or my iPad and I can raise the font level. And I can read it with no problem. He's like, why don't you do that for me? He said, I watch my kids play Little League on Facebook and FaceTime. When my mother was in her hospice, all she wanted to do before she died was listen to some of her favorite Irish music. But what about the person that's in a hospice that AA gave them their entire life? AA give them, gave them a new life. How come somebody in a hospice up until a couple of months ago, if they wanted to join into an AA meeting, <clears throat> couldn't go on an AA website and find a Zoom address and password? I mean, how far behind the times were we? So far behind. That man said to me, I'm not going to tell you who's emailing me the Daily Reflection because you guys will sue him. And he was right. We were currently writing cease and desist letters to a guy who had a 12,000 person Daily Reflections mailing list because he was violating our copyright. We were, we were writing him every month. And finally, at AAWS, I remember, we're like, what are we doing? This guy is doing, he has 12,000 members because they want the service he has. And that's why today you see the Daily Reflection on the website. But he was 78 years old. These people who want to tell people two lies about technology two big lies the first one is age and the second one is economic condition uh maybe back in 2000 there were not a lot of people 78 years old reading digital books or getting on the web uh there are today Age is not a barrier to technology. Does it take a little bit more maybe if they've never used it? Yes. To learn? Of course. The second is economics. We have all these fear people who say, oh, we can't do this. 
because we'll be picking on the person that doesn't have a computer or doesn't have a phone or whatever else. Um, to those people, I would say this. All the large social services and welfare agencies in this country keep in contact with their client via email or digital communication and have many programs that provide phones for people. If you look at the email traffic or the, or the, or the web traffic on the GSO website, over 60% of it is coming from phones. 60% is coming from the web browsers on phones. I also met a young lady at a regional forum. After she said what she said, I needed to talk to her too. Because she went up to the podium and she was 19 years old. And she said that two years ago, her parents had had it with her and her drinking but she couldn't stop. She promised she would stop, but she could not. And she went out again and got really drunk. And she came home and in the middle of the night typed into a search bar, I'm a teenage girl and I can't stop drinking. She eventually found the AA.org website and eventually found the Houston or the Dallas in a group website. The next day, two women came and took her to her first meeting. And two years later, she's at a regional forum telling that story. See, we've let, there are certain traditions we love to use to shut down technology. Anonymity, but I think we've gotten past a lot of that. We can embrace technology and still observe our anonymity tradition. But the go-to one for the technology haters is always affiliation. They love to throw out the affiliation card. It blows my mind because if you happen to pass a garage sale, stop and just see if they have an old phone book for sale and buy that phone book because I keep a couple around because you see when you open to the A section where Alcoholics Anonymous would be in a phone book you will see that on the top corner of that page Al's Towing bought a quarter of a box ad because Al's Towing has more money than AA and then Right below or above, you'll see Triple A Tire Repair. And they made their purchase in bold because they had more money than AA. But no one said we can't put our phone number in the phone book because Al's Towing has an ad and it'll look like Al's Towing is the official towing company of Alcoholics Anonymous. Why wouldn't they say that? because it sounds ridiculous, because it is ridiculous. So when people tell me that if something appears on a computer screen at the same time as anything AA related, it's affiliation, that is equally ridiculous. We can't make up new rules just because it's digital. We have to apply the same principles. I have been to 10 general service conferences as a voting member. I've been to, if I include my uh, four years as an appointed community member, I've been to 14. I'll stick with the 10 as a voting member. That's 10 weeks at seven days a week, 70 days, three meals a day, so just on general service conferences alone, we're up above 200 meals, most of them at the Crown Plaza in New York, some of them at the Hilton Westchester. Add my eight years on the board and three board weekends a year. So uh, that's 24 board weekends. 
four days each, I've eaten thousands of meals at the Crown Plaza or the Hilton. When I walk into the room and it's buffet style, I just want to let anyone know, in case you've never been to a board weekend, uh, the Diet Coke labels are not taken off all the Diet Cokes. The Sprite labels are not taken off all the Sprite. No one believes that just because I'm drinking Diet Coke that is the official soft drink of Alcoholics Anonymous. I've been to many, many AA conventions and assemblies. Sometimes I'll pull into the parking lot and on the digital sign below the name of the hotel, it'll say area so-and-so assembly here this weekend. But that does not make Marriott the official hotel brand of Alcoholics Anonymous. Affiliation takes two parties. I just want to define it for everyone in case someone has told you that there is one party affiliation. Affiliation takes two parties making an agreement that they're affiliating with each other. Anyone can say they're the official whatever of Alcoholics Anonymous. That doesn't mean we're affiliating with them. We only affiliate with them if we say it, if we do it. Now, there are the words actual or implied in that tradition. So we have to be careful and we have to be thoughtful and we have to contemplate what we do. But the answer should not be no right away. Here's the biggest problem in AA service overall. And this goes for everything besides technology. We, and I'm pointing the finger at myself, pleading guilty because I had to learn to stop doing it. We, and I'll define we as not me anymore, but as a past trusted servant, my job is to get people interested in service. That's my number one job. But if we define we as the current leadership of Alcoholics Anonymous, and leadership starts at the top, groups, districts, areas, the general service board. But if you're a leader in AA, if you're a district chair or a delegate or an area chair or a trustee, here's our problem. We like to go out to the masses and tell everybody we need more people in service. We need more people. And then you show up. And then you commit the Class A felony in Alcoholics Anonymous service. You showed up with a new idea. You see, we didn't tell you to show up with a new idea. We just told you we needed you. We needed you to do everything the same way I did it. Because I know how to do it correctly because the person before told me. And I don't want you outshining me and doing it better than me. The f Let me just give you a simple hint. If we want AA to be great, we need to hope and pray that the people who succeed us in leadership positions do a better job. That's what I do in my workplace. I want the person who succeeds me to be better at me. But our egos get in the way all the time. And somebody shows up and we say, oh, excuse me, maybe you were confused. Yes, we wanted you to show up here, but leave your new ideas at home. We have this under control. And our behavior can be devastating as far as the long-term effect on succession in AA service. I was at an assembly in 2003. At that assembly were two past trustees who I knew very well. Um, a woman went up to the microphone because she was the new DCM GSR 
I want to say it was called training or orientation chair. She had a brand new idea. She said, maybe what we've been doing hasn't been working. She gave her new idea, explained it. And a past delegate got up to the microphone and took her head off. Publicly humiliated her. And you could see, see all of her enthusiasm leave her body. I had never seen this one past trustee before get up to the microphone at the assembly, but that day he did. You could meet John a million times and you'd never know he was a trustee. But that day when he introduced himself, he said his name was John S., a past delegate and a past Northeast Regional trustee. And I'll never forget when he looked right in that young woman's eyes up at the podium. And he said, young lady, I want to thank you for your new idea. It sounds incredible. And I can't wait to be back to get your next report as to how your idea is going. And in an instant, I saw enthusiasm and pride enter her body even more than before that past person's comments. We have that ability in AA service to turn people away or to bring them into the fold. And it's a very simple choice. I don't care if you're a great delegate. I don't care if you're a great district chair. I don't care if you're great at being a treasurer. That is not your most important job. The most important job in AA service is are you encouraging people who are not in service or new to service to continue to serve Alcoholics Anonymous? Because if you're doing the other thing, I would just ask you to resign and leave. Sure, be a member of AA, but don't hurt our fellowship. Don't hurt our future. Don't think that just because something is new, it's bad. We talk about Rule 62 all the time, but we never talk about Rule 63. But there is a Rule 63, and that is this is the way we've always done it. That's Rule 63 in AA service. If we do not embrace technology, we will not be relevant. I just want to repeat that. If we are not where the newcomer is looking for help, we will not be relevant. So when I say SEO, search engine optimization, when I say Google AdWords or grants, Google grants, we got to find a way to harness this we got to find a way that when someone is traveling, that's why meeting guide is so great because you can usually find a meeting right away. But for professionals and everybody else, we want them to be able to find Alcoholics Anonymous. I know there's a big uproar on Google grants and in-kind donations and gap accounting rules. Let's face it, folks. Since 1966, we've been taking free ad time on televisions and radios called public service announcements. As a condition of their license, they have to give certain time to certain nonprofits and charities. What is the difference between taking a minute from, for free from WABC and getting a couple of grants from Google? to buy certain words so when they're searched, we show up first. They're both private companies, ABC and Google. We, we really need to have a, a real comprehensive plan about the future. 
because we, you know, AA service is like recovery. I can't rest on yesterday's sobriety. It will not keep me sober today. When you look at our three principles, our three legacies, the steps are our message. The traditions protect our message. And the concepts perpetuate our message. Sometimes people feel that we're a do-gooder organization or a social justice agency or a self-help organization. We're not. We actually have a very selfish purpose. Sure, it's good to do nice things. But without newcomers, we die. Without newcomers, AA eventually goes away. You know, when people say, why is the newcomer the most important person in the room, which is not something I believe. Because if the person's not there to open the door then the newcomer has nowhere to get in. But the newcomer does have a responsibility that the person there 30 years before him does not have. And that is to keep the doors open after that person before them has passed away. Without new people, Alcoholics Anonymous goes away. And so perpetuating our message is, is of vital, vital importance. The last thing I want to talk about is correctional facilities. Some of you might be familiar with the term lockdown. Lockdown is when a facility goes into super high security alert. It is usually because a breach happened or staffing is short. When, when facilities go into lockdowns, visiting hours are cut and usually volunteers are not allowed in. How many facilities are in lockdown in the U.S. for sometimes six months, a year? A couple of days ago, I spoke at a prison in Oregon from where I sit right now. I shared my experience, strength, and hope. If people think I'm being too hard on this failure, complete failure, I just want to give you some examples. How is it possible on March 16th of 2020 there were no guidelines for WebEx or Zoom meetings in any of our literature? I've been using this technology for work for years. Years. We're going to have to decide what we do at some Zoom home groups. Right now at GSO, we won't assign them to a geographic area. We make them list as an online international meeting. I don't know. I think it's possible in 20 years or less, there might be a digital area. There might be a delegate that represents all the groups that only are digital. Now, I am not opposed, and I'm a big fan of in-person meetings. I love getting a cup of coffee. I love getting a Dunkin' Donuts coffee and driving to a meeting. I love smoking a cigar outside and talking to some crazy newcomer who's out of their mind. I love in-person AA. I'm not trying to say that we need to get rid of in-person AA. But when it comes to getting the hand of AA out there, we need to embrace this technology. So I would uh, be glad to listen to comments, questions, whatever, but thank you very much for having me here today. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Billy. Uh, I'm just absolutely blown away and I'm sure everybody else is. And uh, um, you know, talk about enthusiasm. Uh, so many things that you said today to take back to our to our individual groups. Um, please stick around, everybody, uh, for the question and answer session. Um, uh, before that, you know, Billy mentioned.